this is the Age of Asparagus. I'll tell you what. Let's start by learning how to create a canvas for our project and a palette of those infamous Bob Ross colors. A quick tip right off the start. If you messed around with Krita's settings a bit and want to return all of Krita's settings to their defaults, hold Control shift alt when you open Krita and you'll get this nice little option to reset everything. Let's go to the file menu and choose new. For his Mystic Mountain show, B-Dog is using an 18 inch wide by 24 inch tall canvas. So let's create the digital equivalent. Our canvas is going to be in the portrait layout. So let's hit the portrait icon here. And beside our height and width, let's change the units to inches. Set a width of 18 inches and a height of 24 inches. Now, since this is a digital painting, we need to tell Krita what resolution we want. If you plan on having your art physically printed, then you probably want to set the resolution to 300 ppi or pixels per inch. However, I'm going to be using 100 ppi for this tutorial because my computer can't quite handle recording the video and using large brushes without getting laggy at the higher resolutions. If you want to follow along with me exactly, then I suggest you go with 100 ppi as well. If you're sharing your work online, 100 ppi is great. If you plan on printing your work, this project will still look great on standard letter-sized paper, 8.5 by 11 inches, and it even looks pretty decent on a larger 11 by 17 piece of paper. However, if you want to print it at its full 18 by 24 inches, you'll need to increase the resolution. If you like what you learn here in this series, you can always go back and try it again at a higher resolution like 300 ppi. However, you will need to recreate many of the brushes to work properly. Thankfully, by the end of this series, you should have the skills to do that, no problem. Okay, let's create that canvas already. Before we do anything else, we want to make sure that we save our document. This is because Krita has an autosave feature that can save your life if something crashes while you're working on your document or you forget to save it, or something like that. I suggest you get in the habit of saving any new projects before you've even started painting. File, Save, choose a location you want to save your drawing in, and since we'll be doing the Mystic Mountain, I will name my file the Mystic Mountain. You can check the autosave settings from the Settings menu and choosing Configure Krita. Then from the General section you can go to the Miscellaneous tab and you'll see here that Krita by default autosaves every five minutes. I'll show you how to access this backup file later. While we're here, let's increase the number of undo steps we have. By default I have 30. I'm going to cause Bob Ross to roll over in his happy little grave and increase that to 100. Sorry BR, you may not make mistakes, but my happy little accidents look like ass. So before we start painting, we need to create our palette. By default, you should see the advanced color selector at the top right. If you don't, you can reset the layout by clicking the workspaces menu at the extreme top right and choosing default. While I'm up here, these keys here show any of the keys and buttons I'm pressing in case I'm not clear in my explanation. We need to add the palette docker, which we can do from the settings menu, dockers, and palette. Mine appears at the bottom right. But since we're mostly going to be using the palette for our colors, I'm going to grab its handlebar and drag it over top of the advanced color selector. The white outline shows where the docker will land when you let go. So make sure that the white outline appears over top of the advanced color selector like this. Then let go. Now the palette appears as a tab with the rest of these default dockers. We're not going to need the last one. So let's get rid of it to make room by hitting this little X here. That was the color sliders docker. If you ever want to get it back again, you can go to the settings menu under dockers and choose color sliders and it will reappear back. 
in the same location. Actually, let's get rid of the advanced color selector too. You have immediate access to this in the pop-up anyway. Okay, time to add some colors to our palette. Click the palettes menu at the bottom left of the docker to see a list of pre-existing palettes. To create our own, in the name field, enter the name of your palette. Under columns, let's enter four so we have some nice big wide colors. Then hit save. Now you should be able to scroll down and at the bottom find your new empty palette. You can click away to close that window. We have multiple ways to add colors. We can hit the plus button which will add the foreground color which is the top color on this button over here. Let's go ahead and add midnight black. If your color appears like a small dot like this you can just grab this handle here and resize it and it should blow up into a nice square that fits four across. For Bobby's titanium white, good old plain white will work just fine. You can switch the white to the foreground by clicking these swap arrows or by hitting X on the keyboard. Now by hitting the plus it'll add our new foreground color, titanium white. While you're building your palette, if you make a mistake, you can click to select the color on the palette and then hit this delete color button. It's sometimes hard to see which one is selected but there is a light blue outline around the color. But I do want that white. Now let's get crazy and add all the colors I know you've been waiting for. To add a custom color, click this add color button. In the window that pops up, we can choose a color to add. I'm going to add colors based on their RGB or red, green, blue values. First up is Thalo Blue. Thalo Blue has a value of 42, 100, and 173. And while you're adding these to make it a little quicker, you can just hit tab to jump between the fields. That's OK, and there's our Thalo Blue. Next up, Prussian Blue. 0, 49, 83. Now I'll have them run all the colors across the bottom of the screen with their RGB values so you can complete the creation of your palette. I'll also put the values in the video's description. Next up is Dark Sienna at 92, 47, and 8. Van Dyke Brown, whoops, I accidentally added white again. Delete that. Van Dyke Brown. 45, 26, 12. Alzheimer Crimson, 142, 23, 33. Sap Green, 75, 104, 20. Cadmium Yellow, 248, 237. 87. Yellow ochre, 178, 132, and 38. Indian yellow, 230, 186, 37. Finally, bright red, 192, 71, 67. Again, if your docker isn't rendering properly, you can just slightly adjust it and it should pop back into shape. Alrighty, before we start painting in our next video, I want you to watch the first four and a half minutes of Bob Ross's Mystic Mountain lesson available on YouTube. Once you've done that, please come back and join me for part two. Don't forget to save your work. You can do that quickly by hitting Control S or from the file menu, save.